Hello and welcome. I'm Kirsten Walsh with Financial Standard. Today we're talking to Philippe Jordan, President of global alternative beta asset management firm CFM. We're here to talk about CFM IS Trends, a true alternative beta strategy which invests in long-term trend following and aims to provide real portfolio diversification benefits. Welcome Philippe. Thanks for having me. So Philippe, before we look at the fund itself, what is the biggest challenge Australian advisors face currently? I think in general, um, the greatest challenge we all face in portfolio management is achieving true and meaningful diversification on behalf of our clients. Now, diversification is one of the most important and powerful concepts in portfolio management, but achieving true diversification is the real challenge. What is the solution to achieving true diversification and when should advisors act? The solution is actually using um, strategies and techniques to measure what is true correlation over long-term horizons and achieving the only uh, true free lunch in portfolio management, as Harvey Markowitz said, uh, which is diversification. Uh, the time to act is, is, um, is not precise, meaning uh, there's, no, there's no value in trying to time diversification. And what are some examples of alternative beta? Well, one, one example that, that folks are fairly familiar with is long-term trend following. So the, the idea here is relatively simple, is that um, the recent past tends to repeat itself uh, in markets. Um, so if, if the dollar has been going up for six months, the odds are it's going to go up for another six months. If commodities have been going down for six months, the odds are it, it, they'll keep going down six months after that. Uh, if rates uh, have been going up uh, for six months, the next six months are probably going to ma be made up of rates going ever so higher, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is true on average. It's not true at all points in time. Uh, but in general, markets trend. And they trend because human beings are anchored um, in uh, conformist behavior. Um, you're wearing a suit, uh, a white shirt. I'm wearing a suit and a blue shirt. We're not going to meet that many people today that are going to be wearing yellow suits uh, with orange ties. There's a few contrarians amongst us, uh, but in general, people conform. And when people invest in markets, they tend to conform to other people's behavior in aggregate. And how does the alternative beta strategy of long-term trend following benefit a traditional portfolio? Why are these strategies better than other similar strategies? Well, let's start at how they benefit a traditional portfolio. And the definition of a traditional portfolio is long equity beta and long fixed income, sovereign. Um, the manner in which they benefit that type of portfolio is through decorrelation. Long-term trend following has a very low correlation to uh, those strategies. So it tends to perform at times when those strategies are not performing and vice versa. Now, I want to be very cautious here. Um, some people take away from, from, from those words that long-term trend following works precisely when your stock portfolio is, is going down. That's not true. Uh, over a protracted bear market, it will tend to outperform your stock portfolio. But it is not a direct hedge to your stock portfolio. If it was a direct hedge, it would be anti-correlated, and it's merely decorrelated. So it's really a portfolio tool. It's a, it's a strategy which on a standalone basis performs, but when integrated to a traditional long-only portfolio, it really is a diversifier. And as such, it is the proverbial free lunch described by Harvey Markowitz. There's many alternative beta strategies which in their own right uh, are very appealing. Um, and they're appealing because they have different correlations uh, to long-term trend following and in turn have low correlation also to benchmarks. But if, if I had to pick an attribute of long-term trend following that I really found uh, appealing, it would be the persistence of the strategy. So when you look at long-term trend following through the statistical lens, uh, you can go back two centuries or so and find data for stock markets, grain markets, other commodity markets. And you can measure statistically how persistent long-term trend following has been. Um, you can do that over two centuries. There's not that many strategies 
where you can go back two centuries in order to test the data. And in that respect, long-term trend following is quite appealing. So how does CFMIS Trends invest? What are the fund's investment objectives? And what, in your view, is CFM's competitive advantage in the alternative beta space? Well, uh, the first advantage is we, we've been doing this for 26 years. Um, so we've, we've made many mistakes and we've learned from these mistakes over, over decades now. Um, and building a solid and robust long-term trend follower is uh, first and foremost about finding a quality signal, a frequency at which you can deploy your long-term trend follower. May it be six months, five months, three months in terms of turnover. Uh, that's the most robust in terms of cost versus signal output. Um, finding that is, is difficult. You need a lot of know-how. Then constraining the cost of executing the strategy in the markets is, is the next big value add. Um, cost is, is friction. Uh, friction um, is, is probably one of the most expensive things that we have to deal with in markets. So uh, constructing signals correctly in a robust fashion uh, with very little in-sample bias, meaning don't look, don't look in the rear view mirror too much when you're building your models. Uh, you, can, you can optimize a model to the previous five years, right? but it, it's gonna have very little predictive value over the next five years. So you're trying to build something that is truly robust over a long horizon, and then constrain the cost of execution. And execution contains two components. One, executing to get the trend on and off, and then two, you execute in order to keep the strategy at constant risk. Um, so one, one of the routines that we deploy in long-term trend following is we manage the risk at constant levels. So we set the risk level at 10 volatility or 15 volatility, depending on, on one's appetite for risk, and then we maintain that risk, meaning we reshape the portfolio depending on the realized risk of the portfolio on a day-to-day -day basis. And finally, you mentioned long-term trend following as a strategy is not new. In fact, it forms the basis of many managed future and CTA strategies, and it's been available here in Australia and globally for some time. What makes the CFMIS trends different, and why is it better than what's already available? My personal point of view is that in order to do this practically in, in, a, in a format that is truly actionable, you need to do those two things. Design models that are truly robust to the future, as instead of being robust to the past. And that's, that's, that's not a trivial uh, uh, thing to, to accomplish. It's, it's very, very easy to fool yourself with data. Um, you, you need to have developed a lot of know-how and discipline to avoid um, the in-sample bias problem. And then two, controlling cost. Controlling cost is, 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 is absolutely key. You can design models that look optimal in simulation, but when they have to trade through true costs, which include commissions, financing, bid offer spreads, and impact, then they fall apart. They can't, they can't deal with the friction of the market. So building robust models combined with true cost control that can handle the reality of the marketplace at constant risk, that whole package I think is high value. Well, Philippe, we welcome that insight on alternative beta and trend following. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome, thank you. And thank you for joining us here on FSI TV. We'll see you next time.